Hello everyone and welcome to video 29 where I thought it might be good to look at the perfect tenses because they cause so much confusion. Listen, don't worry, it's something that comes with time and practice, but just remember one thing about the perfect tenses, past, present and future. They are all about something before. The key word is before because all the perfect tenses indicate something that happened before. Let's start by looking at the structure of the perfect tenses. They have an auxiliary using the verb to have. This is what becomes past, present or future. I have or he or she has in the present. I, you, he, she, it, we or they had in the past, I, you, he, she, we, they will have in the future. Then after the auxiliary, you use the past participle of whichever verb is the actual action. Hmm. Past participles. If it is a regular verb, it will end with ed. For example, worked, needed, wanted, traveled, lived, loved, liked. If it is irregular, it could be anything. When you learn English verbs, you often learn them with the simple present, the simple past and the past participle. Work, worked, worked. Live, lived, lived. In regular verbs, the simple past and the past participle are the same. Then there are irregular verbs. See, saw, seen. Hmm. Am or is, was or were, been. The verb to be is highly irregular. Break, broke, broken. Go, went, gone. The past participle is what you need to know for the perfect tenses. Let's look at some examples of what they mean. I'll start with the past perfect. This is simply had plus the past participle. I had worked, he had seen, she had gone. We use it to show a past finished action that happened before another past finished action. For example, I had bought the shares before I realised the company was in bad shape. Action one, you bought the shares. Action two, you realised the company was bad. They are both in the past. To make a correct sentence, the first action needs to be in the past perfect, had bought, and the second action in the simple past, realised. Just a quick note here about contractions. When we speak, we'd say I'd rather than I had. You could say the sentence, I'd bought the shares before I realised the company was in bad shape. The opposite way round. You can swap the order of each clause. I realised the company was in bad shape after I'd bought the shares. But the first action is still in the past perfect. Try this sentence. He'd worked at Veolia until 2010 and then he joined our company. He'd worked happened before he joined. The past perfect is the first action and the simple past is the second. Now, the present perfect. I have worked. He has lived. We have been. It's the present of the verb to have followed by the past participle. It can seem confusing because it's a present and a past tense. It sometimes shows something that started in the past but is not finished. Or something recently finished that has some connection to the present, maybe a consequence. But it is both in the past and present. For example, I've lived in France for seven years means I still live in France. It's not finished. It started seven years ago, but it is still true now. I could also say I've lived in France since 2017. For a length of time, seven years, or since a date, 2017. 
I've worked with EF since 2018. It means I still work with that company. The present perfect also works for the following sentence. She's broken her arm so she cannot drive. She has broken or she's broken is a recently finished action, but look, there is a consequence in the present. She cannot drive. In this case, it is the present perfect followed by the simple present or present continuous. Imagine someone asks, what's she doing now? Answer, oh, she's finished her homework, so she's getting ready for the party. This is she's finished. Present perfect shows a recently finished action, followed by she's getting ready, present continuous, which shows an action in progress. Yes, in this sentence, the contractions are the same. She's. It can mean she has or she is, depending on the verb tense. You learn to hear the right one in context. The first action will be she has, present perfect. And the second action, she is, if it's the continuous tense or the verb to be in the simple present. For example, she's finished her homework, so she's very happy. Present perfect and simple present. It's an action in the past that has a consequence or connection to the present. In the future perfect, we are talking about something that will happen before something else in the future. We use will have plus past participles. I'll have finished my book by the time he gets home. I'll have finished, future perfect, first action, followed by he gets home, simple present, second action. He'll have eaten all the pizza if we don't hurry. He'll have eaten, first action, followed by we don't hurry, second action. I'll have fallen asleep by the time he arrives. I'll have fallen, followed by he arrives. Here we use the future perfect, followed by the simple present. Just one note about contractions. I know you don't like using all of them. Some are easy, like I'm, <coughs> excuse me, but some feel weird, like wheel. Yes, it sounds like wheel, as in the wheel on a car. But when you listen to English speakers, the only time we don't use contractions is when we write more formal emails, but also when we want to make a point. For example, we'll go to the beach this afternoon. We will go to the beach this afternoon emphasizes the will, which shows a very strong intent. So try to use contractions where appropriate. I've, you've, he's, she's, it's, we've, they've for the verb to have in the present. I'd, you'd, he'd, she'd, it'd, we'd, they'd for the verb to have in the past, had. I'll have, you'll have, he'll have, she'll have, it'll have, we'll have, they'll have for the verb to have in the future. It's, it'd, it'll seem like the hardest to say, but listen to some English speaking and you'll hear lots of contractions. And it's great when you can recognise them. And again, it can mean it has or it is, depending on the context. To summarise, the perfect tenses are about things that went on before now or before something else in the past or the future. The past perfect is the first action of two actions in the past. The future perfect is the first action of two actions in the future. The present perfect could be something that started in the past but is still true or something recently finished with a consequence in the present. They are constructed with have or has, had, will have, plus the past participle. Don't be afraid of the perfect tenses. They might appear complicated, but with practice, you can use them to express more about what you want to say. 
thank you for watching another quick video. I hope it's helped you to understand the perfect tenses and have confidence to use them. Please click subscribe, like, comment, share. Ask me a question. I appreciate any feedback from you. Please write to me. You can download the transcript from the link in the description. You can also contact me through my website if you would like some online lessons with me. Remember that English could be your passport to a promotion. Keep going and bye for now.